So we're going to start with the purple wax. This is the, the easy wax to understand. We've got an eccentric ring blank here. And um, I know everyone wants to carve these things out so that they're perfectly uh, circular. And there's a tool to do that. That's, that's this tool right here. It's basically a wax reamer. And you can put it in and then adjust your size by just rotating it. And although that seems ideal, honestly, most hands are not perfectly round. So it's not going to help you do anything in terms of what you're trying to do for shaping into a hand that has a wider knuckle and a narrower section. And most people don't have completely cylindrical fingers. It's just a, a question of how much meat is surrounding the bone. So look at the, the fingers that you're trying to match. Um, especially if you're doing a wedding band for someone, make sure that it fits the way they want it to fit. And although a circle seems to be most appropriate for many people, um, when they go to put it on, they might find it's uncomfortable and they'll wear it into shape. So rather than spend all the time using tools that no one has access to, we're going to use just the um, spoonie tool. And the first thing I'm going to do is start carving out the outer edge, right? And this this chamfer, this interior chamfer, is going to give the band a softer gradient for when we're putting the ring on. And um, when you're carving a ring, <laughs> make sure it's close to the right size beforehand. Um, don't do all of your detail work on this exterior edge. If you spend a lot of time carving this outer edge, and then you go to size it up, you may find that uh, the pressure that you've been using to carve the ring once it's to the right thinness uh, breaks the ring. And we don't want that. So I'm going to bring the light a little more forward so we can see what's going on. So ultimately, we want to get it relatively uniform. And so you can carve, right, by just holding the blade and rotating. Your fingers are going to get sore as you do this. Um, or you can use a scraping motion like so. And what you'll find is occasionally, if you've been too aggressive in your carving, there's something called chatter. So as I'm going across, you can see that there's little chips and dings in the design that don't work. And so there are ways to relieve the chatter by just changing your angle to a smoother section and then gently working it in and shaving it down. That gives you a little more control. And then you can also try and carve it out change our focus here. Like so. So we can just carve it out. And just applying smooth and even pressure. And going slow is important. And most of the time, I'm, I'm pretty dumb when I do this. I automate it in the sense that uh, I hold the blade steady and I rotate the wax. So I'm actually pushing the wax in a circle. And I'm not trying to get my wrist to do this really hard motion. Um, generally, when you're shaving, you're holding your wax steady and you're moving the tool. But when you're trying to cut, I will rotate my wax while I hold my tool steady. So um, however you want to do that, if you're a left hand dominant, you know, it's still the same principle. It's just going to look mirrored. Okay, so now we've got kind of a nice soft radius. And that's what's going to invite the finger in to the ring. And um, you really don't want to keep this squared off edge, especially on the interior. So if you want to get in there with your thumbnail and scrape it, you can do that. The thumbnail works really well. Or if you have the half round needle file, finding the right angle so that you're not stabbing your wax, this works really well. And the file is only going to cut on the push stroke, so you want to make sure that you're not rubbing it back and forth so vigorously that uh, the wax heats up, because that's going to clog your file. You'll need to use um, a nylon toothbrush or uh, your fingernail to clean out the back of the file, like so. Um, if you go too fast and you melt the wax, it's really hard to get out, and then you have to run a small tool through all that texture to break it loose, so slower is faster. And when you're carving wax, it's not supposed to be a rushed process. 
It's just sort of casually doing it. So as we go to carve everything out, when you get to the interior of the band ring, I always try and keep it very smooth. So I'll do the scraping process. We'll see if we can get the lighting to work right on here. So I just scrape that interior. and you're working the entire way around. And you're gonna do this until it fits whichever finger you've decided. And uh, I'm not prone to wearing jewelry with all the metal work that I do, but when I do, for some reason, I like to wear it on my left hand. I always make it for my left hand. So I think I'll try and make something that fits my right hand. I'll go maybe, maybe up to the middle finger. I'll do a middle finger band today. So you don't need to watch me do all that carving. Uh, I'll switch to time lapse and we'll finish it up there and then maybe I'll touch on what happened uh, at the end of the video. So you can see how many uh, shavings were produced in this process. There's quite a few. Uh, don't throw those out. They're going to come in handy later when we start doing hot tool work. But you can see there's also not much left of the wax. Uh, this is a pretty large carving of that big finger. But it fits on smoothly. And then it comes off with a little bit of work, which is about what you want. And we've got a slight ellipse. So you can see that the outside is a perfect circle and the inside is uh, slightly oval. And there's not a lot of material for me to work with, um, but there's plenty there. Once this is metal, it'll be fully supported. But at this point, you want to be delicate with your ring, um, because when you go to do any of your carving operations, you're going to need to make sure that the back of the wax is supported, and that the edge of the ring is supported, and that when you're carving uh, this is really tricky when you're carving. Make sure that you're not squeezing too hard with with the ring holding fingers because oftentimes you'll be so focused on carving that you'll just make it snap with sheer compression. So gentle support and it's okay to have that lag. It's okay to use the table, but always keep the back of your band supported once you get down to uh, this thickness. Okay, so let's be clear here. This thickness here, that's sturdy. This thickness right here, very delicate. By the time you get down to something like this, it's probably going to snap on you at least once, and we're going to cover repairs. But um, for this initial band, I kind of want to cover everything that you might want to know about process so you can take it wherever you'd like to go. I'm a fan of big, gaudy rings. When I decide to go big, it's uh, borderline obscene. So... Um, We'll, we'll get this figured out and then add some detail work and then figure out if we want to add uh, a large thing on top to just really take it over the top. And then from there, you really know how you want to combine uh, everything. 